Hello, my name is Maria Otero, and I'm going to be doing my speech today on the agenda setting theory. So my speech is going to consist um, with giving you a definition, as well as providing some background over the origin of how this theory came to be developed, and then later on how it became extended to what is now known as framing. Uh, and then also examples in the media um, of this theory, as well as a conclusion to summarize what this theory entails. So definition. We know how big of an impact the media has on the news and how it's presented and how people perceive it. When certain news gets more attention, audiences tend to think it's more important. The media decides which news comes first based on what they think people care about. This process is called agenda setting. The media focuses on the most relevant information and reflects today's society's most major issues and thoughts. According to the communicationtheory.org website, the theory is relevant when it comes to advertising, public relations, marketing and consumer behavior, mass communication, and political communication. I have become well-versed in this theory just as a communication and public relations student here at UNG. Um, so the origins of how this theory came to be. According to study.com, it was developed by Maxwell McCombs and Donald Shaw in 1972. It came to be developed after they noticed a correlation between what voters thought was important and what the media was talking about at that time, more specifically, the US presidential election of 1968. So to kind of clarify it a little bit more is the media doesn't tell us what to think, but what to think about. <laughs> Uh, this theory was later expanded in 1988 to include the concept of framing. This is when the media is trying to get the viewer to follow a certain line of thought, usually when with a end goal in mind. They present certain facts to get the viewer to come to a desired conclusion. That is why today you kind of hear a lot of like how certain media outlets are usually more left leaning or right leaning. So an example in the media is going to be the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard defamation trial. This got extensive media coverage um, and various um, narrative framing by media outlets. So originally this trial happened, I believe back in 2016 overseas in the UK. And of course they were American actors, but it didn't get much coverage. Um, and so it was finally reopened up within the past two years and it gained a lot of coverage. And it really shaped um, public perception and influenced discussions about domestic violence, celebrity relationships, and the dynamic of power in Hollywood. So this really was agenda setting for public discourse. Another example of media is gonna be, well, not media, but agenda setting theory in the media. It's gonna be the wedding between Sophia Ritchie and Elliot Greenwich. So Sophia is a daughter of a famous American singer, Lionel Richie, and she married Elliot this past year, in, um, a music executive for a indie, indie label, 10K Projects, which he represents various top um, artists. Um, so this event, their wedding, also got extensive media coverage, and partially because she influenced some of it. She... Um, had a lot of social media posts leading up to this wedding that you know kind of grew anticipation for the public and gained interest so therefore when it came time time to the wedding it got a lot of coverage so much so that Vogue referred to this ceremony as this is a royal wedding of the year so you kind of see the level of like if the people think it's important it will be covered because the media sees that that's what the public wants to see want to learn more about or see more right so really, when you compare it to other high society ceremonies, such as the nuptials of Anat Ambani and his wife, Radhika, said that probably wrong, merchant, you see how they gained media coverage, partially because they had an American artist, such as Rihanna, perform at their wedding, or not their wedding, their nuptials. And this was pretty big because you don't really hear a lot about Rihanna performing because she took a break from the music industry. So you see how they later um, in this past year have also gained media coverage, but not such um, not so extensively to the point where they lasted in the media. Um, 
partly because a lot of uh, Americans didn't know who they are. While they are influential people and very popular in India, they just don't have that same interest level here in the United States. So in conclusion, I hope that you gained a better understanding of the agenda setting theory today. And hopefully you learned and it stuck about how this theory came to be originated. And, you know, hopefully you gain some insight about the framing in the media. And we discussed today the real world examples that help demonstrate agenda setting theory in the real world. And here are my references and thank you so much for watching.